Hello and welcome to the broadcast for the capstone mission to the moon for NASA. My name is Muriel Baker and right now, some few thousand kilometers above us, Rocket Lab's Photon Lunar Spacecraft and its payload capstone, the satellite bound for lunar space, is completing its final pass of our planet as it readies its escape from Earth orbit. We are live with you from Rocket Lab's Mission Control Center in Auckland, New Zealand, where we are counting down to the sixth and final burst of super-powered engine fire that will catapult Photon and Capstone free of Earth's gravitational pull. Now behind me are hundreds of the Rocket Lab team coming together to support the men and women of our mission operations team who will send the final commands to Photon that will deliver Capstone on its ballistic lunar transfer to the moon. The capstone mission is the step before the next big leap by NASA to return humans to the lunar surface, paving the way for future exploration to our moon and beyond. Now capstone is heading to a gravitational sweet spot in between Earth and the moon called a near rectilinear halo orbit, or NRHO, where the pull of gravity between our planet and the moon come together to allow for a nearly stable orbit. This is a potentially great place to place bigger spacecraft, including a new space station called Gateway, that will provide astronauts with a moon base as part of NASA's, NASA's Artemis program. Now, when Capstone is in the NRHO, it will be controlled and operated by Advanced Space in Colorado, who own the spacecraft and used for at least six months to better understand the orbit's characteristics and suitability for navigation and one-way ranging capabilities with Earth for possible future missions there. But before Capstone began its journey, it first had to get off the ground and into space with a ride on our Electron rocket. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Engine 3, start. 2, 1. Lifting off from our private spaceport Launch Complex 1 on the Mahia Peninsula just last Tuesday, the Capstone mission left Launch Complex 1 on a flawless nighttime launch. After completing the usual launch milestones through Max-Q, first and second stage separation, second stage startup, and then finally separation of Photon from the second stage, Capstone was delivered to an initial and very low Earth orbit of just 165 kilometers. In the day since, Photon with Capstone has continuously raised its apogee to bring us to this point in the mission. Now at just 59 feet or 18 meters tall, Electron is the smallest rocket to attempt a launch to the moon. With 27 missions to space under its belt and now 148 satellites successfully delivered to space, our unique rocket is paving the way forward with this world first mission. Here is more on Electron. A small launcher dedicated for small satellites, Electron was the first of its kind to reach orbit when it first took to the skies in 2017, opening up access to space for small satellite operators. Today, it is the second most frequently launched U.S. rocket annually. More than 140 satellites have found their home in space across more than two dozen Electron missions launched from Rocket Lab Launch Complex 1, the world's first and only private orbital spaceport. Designed, manufactured, and launched by Rocket Lab, Electron is a two-stage launch vehicle powered by liquid oxygen and rocket-grade kerosene. Much of its structures are made of advanced carbon composite material, including its propellant tanks, which is what gives Electron its sleek black look. The rocket is powered by 10 Rutherford engines, nine at the bottom of the first stage, and a 10th space-optimized engine to power the second stage to orbit. The Rutherford engine is the world's first to use an electric pump feed cycle for orbital space travel, making use of electric motors and batteries to drive its propellant pumps. It's also 3D printed using additive manufacturing processes. Electron is also equipped with a third upper stage that serves as in-space propulsion to deploy payloads to orbit. In its most advanced form, this stage is called Photon, a spacecraft bus to support small satellite missions even beyond Earth orbit. 
It's to this structure that the capstone satellite is attached, ready to be carried on its way to its lunar destination and near rectilinear halo orbit. This mission was Electron's highest performance and most complex launch to date, stretched to the absolute limit in terms of fuel and mass margins, is one of the heaviest and hardest missions we have ever lifted. Now helping to manage the capstone launch out of our privately run range control at Launch Complex One was Joe Carpico, our manager of integrated operations here at Rocket Lab, who oversees our Electron operators, including across test and launch. So thank you, Joe, for joining me. Thank you, Muriel, happy to be here. So tell me about your role on launch day. What does that cover? Yeah, typically my role on launch day would be as a uh, launch director or a supplemental launch director. Uh, in the case of this mission, um, I was in that role for the wet dress rehearsal, but not for actually the launch operations. Uh, and that on launch day, I was actually, uh, and leading up to launch day, uh, coordinating the operations. So planning, preparing for, and uh, coordinating the operations with the launch operations team. And you were in range control for the launch of Capstone, weren't you? Uh, I, I was uh, actually in, here in uh, Auckland this time. Pardon me. Mm -hmm. How was that atmosphere anyway here at Mission Control? It was very cool, actually. Yeah. Very, very cool to see the, um, the excitement in the room. Um, this is a very special mission for us, as you know. Yeah, there's been a lot of hard work put in by the team for this mission. Um, and it was one of our heaviest ones to date, in fact, the heaviest one to date. So what? How did you prepare for this launch differently compared to earlier Electron launches? Yeah, from the operational point of view, it was a lot of um, testing in terms of preparing for it. Uh, so our team did a lot of um, a lot of testing on the Lunar Photon vehicle, uh, um, the development, qualification, and flight vehicle testing. Uh, and that not only proved the hardware, but it also enabled us to prove out the operations. So we, um, we leveraged our Electron operations developing our, um, you know, using our procedures, processes, and protocols for operations that we, we learned from our legacy of electron operations mm -hmm. and just basically took that forward to the next step for Lunar Photon. So going through all that testing enabled us to figure out the, uh, the timing of the operations, the sequence, um, what, what we needed to do on the ground, what kind of support equipment we needed, that sort of thing. You must so have, very viable. Uh, you must have learned some positive things as part of that experience that will set us up for future electron missions. We did, yes. Um, very, um, very smooth operations overall. Once we finally got there, actually. So we, it took us a little longer on the wet dress rehearsal, but we learned a lot of good things that uh, enabled us to uh, very efficiently and effectively complete the operations for the launch operation. And we saw the payoff. It was a very smooth nighttime launch. So congratulations to yeah. your team on that one. Thank you very much. Yeah, the team did an exceptional job. How, how did you celebrate at the end of that? How will you celebrate tonight at the end of Capstone? Uh, we, I would say that we. It's a big team effort. We're going to celebrate as a team, so work hard and play hard, if you will. Mm -hmm. uh, so the team is really looking forward to you know, connecting and, um, and, and celebrating together with that, uh, that great achievement. So. Nice. Now tell me, what does it take to be a launch operator? What kind of skills do you need to have to sit in mission control? I would say that um, really uh, curiosity for, for things, uh, being able to solve problems. So uh, our, our, like the operators are not, um, we're not specialists necessarily in one particular technical area, but we need to know a little bit about everything and then be able to apply that to the operations. So really focusing on um, uh, how to efficiently do the operations, uh, how to troubleshoot and solve problems in real time, uh, all the communication and the preparation that kind of goes into that and being able to work through those problems uh, um, you know, live is really a one of the most critical things, if you will. So, so we, we, we take people that you know might be fresh out of uh, college or mm -hmm. university, and they've done a great job with us, as well as people with, with the experience. So you don't necessarily have to have operational experience, but to have that curiosity and that ability to solve problems is probably the most important thing. That's great, because most people would think you need a degree in rocket science to be able to do this job. But you've just said, we don't have to. You can no, come you straight out of high school. Do that. Right, exactly. Yeah. Are you recruiting in your team at the moment? Uh, we are, yeah. We are, we are looking for uh, people to help us. Um, and like I said, uh, we, my team, we, we tend to say that we have some of the most exciting work in the company, being that we're, we're involved with the hot fire testing. So our, my team's responsible for uh, preparing for and conducting the, the stack testing of the electron stages, as well as the lunar photon and other uh, upper stages. And, um, and then also the, the planning, preparation, and conduct of the operations, uh, launch, pre-launch and launch operations. Mm -hmm. So it's really exciting work. I bet it is. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have a preference between night and daytime launches? They're all beautiful to me, but I wonder if you do. Uh, I, don't, I don't think I do necessarily. I think uh, I like them all, yeah. It's, it's, this first uh, never fails. The, the last 10 seconds or 20 seconds of the countdown is just really get your heart pumping, and um, it's really exciting watching them lift off, that's for sure. And a so, final here. question for mm -hmm. you too, Joe. Is there a particular aspect of this mission that you're most proud of, either something you've achieved or that your team has achieved? I, I would say it's a team effort, and the team really did a, did a bang-up job of uh, doing this mission. Um, 
obviously from my operations team in particular, the team just put a lot of time, uh, dedication, uh, long hours, you know, uh, extra time on the weekends and other time away from family to really make this happen. So I really appreciate their efforts um, over the this past couple of years. It's yeah. really a uh, really gratifying to be able to be at that point. It's a lot of and, and we're not no no rest for the weary. We're we got a couple of other launches coming up very soon here. So the team's going to be right back at it. I know. I'm uh, very excited. The next, uh, next couple of weeks. So. Well, congratulations again, Joe, on your role in this mission. It's something you should be very proud of, especially of your team as well. Thank you very um, much, Marie. Thank you so it. much for doing Congratulations me. to you as well. Thank you. So now, of course, Electron played that pivotal role in launching Capstone uh, into space and getting this mission off the ground. But right now, the success of this mission rests solely with our Photon spacecraft. Now, Photon is providing this phase of the Capstone mission with in-space propulsion, communications, power, and high accuracy, attitude, determination, and control. It is a highly capable little vehicle that, alongside Capstone, will soon be on its way to the moon. Now, here is more about Photon. My name is Esan Mosley. I'm the Chief Engineer for Space Systems at Rocket Lab. I'm Rich Hunter, and I'm a Mission Design Engineer on the GNC team. We've taken our Electron kick stage uh, and turned that into a full functioning spacecraft, added a lot of Delta V to its capability in order to be able to deliver the capstone vehicle into this higher energy orbit. Traditionally what they did is they'd line it up right and they'd burn in one direction for a very long time to get the energy they needed to basically put them on a, a translunar injection or a translunar orbit. That is less efficient if you have a lower thrust engine. Uh, the way to get around that is to simply split that burn into multiple burns over the course of several orbits. So rather than build your orbit from circular uh, to a, a translunar injection in one go, you build it from circular through a series of successively more eccentric orbits uh, through a number of burns. So rather than one, like Apollo, we are doing eight burns to build up our translunar injection. And the cool part about the initial phase of the mission, even though it's on day one of six, is the T0 that we launch into will set our right ascension, one of the orbital elements that defines our orbital alignment. And as soon as we launch into that orbital plane, our right ascension at our payload deployment six days into the mission is, is set. And then 10 minutes later, we'll do our first hypercurie maneuver which will set the line of apsides, which is another measure of orbital alignment. So then two of the alignment parameters are set within the first 20 minutes of the mission. So we need to set them really accurately so that they'll drift onto a moving target to then hit a moving target, which is the moon, um, kind of three months later. We are T minus 25 minutes and 33 seconds away from our last Earth orbit maneuver with Photon, the final and most powerful burst of engine fire from Photon's Hypercurie engine, which will accelerate Photon and Capstone fast enough to escape Earth's gravity. Now, just how fast exactly Photon and Capstone are expected to reach speeds of close to 11 kilometers per second. So incredibly quick speeds there. Now around 20 minutes after that translunar injection, Photon will be commanded to detach Capstone and release it on its slow, low, solo, sorry, low energy cruise to the moon. The journey to the moon will take about four months and with Capstone actually passing by the moon to 1.3 million kilometers from Earth, or more than three times the distance between the Earth and the moon, before being pulled back to where it needs to go. Now, during this phase of the mission, Capstone will be controlled by the team at Advanced Space, occasionally commanding the satellite to adjust course as needed to enter the near rectilinear halo orbit. We're going to tune into the comms channels in Mission Control now to listen in to the countdown to ignition of the Hypercurie engine on Photon.
TLI move to start in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. Expected burn duration 98 seconds and we are currently T minus 9 minutes 25 seconds until uh, AOS and ability to confirm. And with that call out from Mission Director Adam Slee, we have confirmation that Hypercurie's engine should have ignited. We are in for a nail-biting wait though. It will be around 20 minutes before operators can confirm whether the burn has indeed been successful. Pardon me, not 20 minutes, 9 minutes. This burn is expected to take 98 seconds and will accelerate Lunar Photon and Capstone to around 24,500 miles or 39,400 kilometres per hour. This velocity will enable Capstone to escape Earth orbit and set off on its ballistic lunar transfer trajectory to the Moon, with Capstone released from Photon and on its solo journey to the Moon at around 20 minutes after that burn is complete. As a reminder, this is the very first mission of NASA's Artemis program to return humans to the surface of the moon, and we could not be more proud and excited to play a key role in kicking off this historic program. As we wait for Hypercurie to complete its planned burn and for Capstone to separate from Lunar Photon, let's dive into a little bit more detail about the small but mighty engine that made this mission possible. Hyper Curie is a high energy evolution of the Curie engine that powers Electron's third stage, what we call the kick stage. The small but mighty Curie engine, named after physicist and chemist Marie Curie, has provided reliable in space propulsion on 24 okay. orbital Electron missions to date. It has played a key role in enabling us to deploy more than 140 satellites to orbit for our customers. Now the Capstone mission is the very first time we leveled up and put Hypercurie into action in space. And so far Hypercurie has exceeded all expectations in flight. The Capstone mission in general too has been hugely important in setting us up for future interplanetary missions, including the Escapade mission to Mars for NASA in 2024, as well as our own private mission to Venus as soon as next year. Now, here to tell us a little bit more about the Hypercurie engine is propulsion engineer Ben Clemmer. Thank you for joining me, Ben. Thank you. Now, this mission and this day is a big one for your team. How are you sure. feeling? Oof. Yeah, feeling a little bit nervous, but really, really excited to finally know if, it's, if we get mission success. And what have you brought with you? Oh, yes. Yeah. So this is a, a thrust chamber and nozzle of the Hypercurie engine. So Can you hold it up? It's quite, oh, yeah. it's so small. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a little one, but uh, yeah, it's uh really powerful and it's doing exactly what we needed to do. And as you can see, you're just kind of lifting it up, doesn't weigh anything at all. <laughs> no, no, no. So what makes Hypercurie different to, to original Curie? Yeah, they're, they're very different engines. Um, first of all, Hypercurie has to put out four times as much thrust and is at the wow. same time much more efficient. It's got um, really, really high performance requirements, so you can sort of think of it as like a Lamborghini compared to a Prius. <laughs> yeah, um, and 
really what makes a difference is its use of hypergolic propellants, as well as the electric pump bed cycle, which makes it a lot more efficient. Yeah. Now, like the Rutherford engine that powers Electron, Hypercure is made with 3D printing. Mm. Why 3D printing? Why did we go with that choice? Yeah, so there's um, two really big advantages that we use. Um, the first one is the ability for rapid prototyping. Like for example, when we were doing early uh, chamber and injector development, we would do our test, get the data back, make design changes, and get something new at the test cell just a few days later. That's awesome. You yeah. can kind of innovate and move forward really yeah. quickly, hey? And the other one is um, you can do a lot of really interesting complex manifolding mm -hmm. uh, with 3D printing that you just can't achieve with, with regular manufacturing. So it really allows us to tune in our injector and our regen chamber, um, gives those designers the flexibility they need. Mm -hmm. Now the team spent more than two years developing the Hypercure engine for this mission, so tell us how you felt and how it felt for the team when you heard uh, that call from Mission Control that it yeah. had, had lit up in space. Wow, yeah, it was, it was pretty unbelievable. Uh, we spent, like you said, two years just thinking about everything that could go wrong and planning for it, designing against it, and so when you finally saw that configuration come back, see that flight data come back, and just know that, that it is exactly what it's designed to do. It was so satisfying and such a relief. Yeah, you must have been absolutely thrilled. Absolutely, yeah. So what challenges come with developing an engine like this for deep space propulsion, as opposed to our typical missions to low Earth orbit? Yeah, there's a few, um, I think on the testing side, uh, one of the big ones is trying to replicate the environment of space. We had to design and develop a whole new test stand uh, to sort of replicate these vacuum conditions so that we could get our nozzle performance analysis correct. Um, but on a bigger scale, a deep space missions last months and years, uh, whereas the kick stage only lasts a few hours. So you really have to consider a lot more the thermal environment and radiation environments uh, when you're designing something for much longer durations in space. Yeah. What moment in this capstone campaign and the lead up to launch mm. did you have the understanding or just that epiphany that this is going to work, this is exciting, yeah, we're yeah. going to see this thing launch. Uh, for me, I think it was the first time we did the stack testing. Uh, at that point, it was sort of like the first time we brought together all the different components of the vehicle and uh, tested it all together. And it was really, when we were able to achieve that, I thought, okay, if we can prepare for this and get this going, we can, we're, we can do a launch. Yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations, Ben. Thank you. I yeah. hope you're proud. I hope so your team's proud. It's, yeah. it's awesome. Thank awesome. you. So, again, I know you'll be anxious to get back to console or yes. join your team out on the floor, but thank you for taking the time to talk to me. Now, putting the Hypercury engine to the test wasn't the only first for this mission. In fact, the team delivered many technological firsts for Rocket Lab. The first of our list of firsts, of course, is that Capstone is Rocket Lab's first mission beyond low Earth orbit. A typical Rocket Lab mission deploys satellites to around 500 kilometers from Earth using our Electron rocket and its kick stage. And for today's mission, Lunar Photon will deploy Capstone to around 1.3 million kilometers from Earth before the satellite loops back to be captured by the moon's gravity. Capstone is also the first collaborative mission between Rocket Lab and Advanced Solutions, Inc., a Colorado-based flight software company acquired by Rocket Lab in late 2021. Now, ASI revolutionized flight software with Max, an off-the-shelf flight software that can be tailored for a range of missions. It has been fantastic to mark our first joint mission, and I know the team are looking forward to many more. The Capstone mission was also our first time using the FR Lite satellite radio, which Rocket Lab has an exclusive license agreement to manufacture with John Hopkins University of Applied Physics Laboratory. And if you've been following Rocket Lab missions for a while, then you'll know we like to do our part to reduce space junk. And for the Capstone mission and for the first time, Rock Electron's second stage deorbited and re-entered uh, sorry, Earth's atmosphere the same day as launch, leaving behind no space debris. The typical time it takes to deal with stage two is mission dependent, but our previous record before Capstone was around 12 days. And last but not least, the Capstone mission was our first time planning and executing lunar trajectories. We look forward to expanding on this heritage with upcoming missions to Venus, Mars and more. But we are now about a minute and a half from the time we expect to receive confirmation that our Hypercury engine ignited successfully and burned for as long as it should have. This is the critical light up of the engine on Photon. 60 to 90 seconds. There we go. So we've got 60 to 90 seconds until we have that confirmation. We're going to keep listening into Mission Control comms. I know the team here is eager to have that good news. Let's keep our fingers crossed.
coming up on the horizon crossing. AOS. Exciting news there from Mission Control. We have had confirmation that the Hypercurie engine lit up and fired Photon and Capstone on its ballistic lunar trajectory toward the moon. Amazing stuff. So that engine was alight for approximately 98 seconds of engine burn. Hypercurie will have produced a change in velocity of around 416 meters per second of delta V and burnt through just a mere 15.9 kilograms of propellant for this Earth escaping maneuver. Amazing stuff. So you can hear everyone, they are fizzing over these statistics coming down to mission control. Now, next up for Capstone will be its separation from Photon to begin its solo lunar expedition. Payload deployment is expected at around 7.18 p.m. local New Zealand time, or 7.18 a.m. UTC. And with that action conveniently timed for around when we'll be within range of a ground station, we should have near real-time confirmation of payload deployment. In the meantime, though, to help distract from that nervous wait, let's hear from some of the Rocket Lab people behind Capstone who have helped make this mission possible. I have to say, it's a pretty incredible feeling. Um, being able to work on a mission that's flying out to the moon, uh, you know, kind of puts you in a really exclusive club, and, uh, along with other missions and, and other folks that have made some of the greatest achievements that mankind has ever accomplished. NASA going back to the moon is such an insane endeavor. I think they're making history again, and to be a part of it is something that I never thought I would get to experience. Yeah, it's awesome, it's so exciting. For me, something that I've been particularly proud of throughout this Capstone program is actually seeing all the bits and pieces we'd worked on years ago, um, kind of coming to life in the forms of Pathfinder and Pathstone, and being able to see those things happening in space and knowing that we're able to carry that forward into Capstone was really rewarding. Everyone in the company really dives into a problem, you know, as soon as it comes up. And everyone is looking for a way to contribute, a way to knock out a problem, and a way to make things happen and do it quickly. And I think that that culture has a lot to do with this, this success that we've had and are going to continue to have. It's been really impressive watching our, our own teams go through that development process. In particular, uh, ASI up in Colorado, um, they, they specialize in flight software um, and we, we are now using their flight software suite on the Lunar Photon vehicle. Um, so it's been you know, really helpful um, and, and really rewarding uh, watching that process. I think what makes Capstone so different is that it's, it's so complex and so much that has to come together. We have insanely tight margins on mass, power, uh, the propulsion performance so that we make it all the way to the moon and I just I haven't seen a system with the strict margins before. Gone through a lot of challenges um, throughout the journey and, and now we've got the spacecraft down uh, on the pad ready to go to the moon and watching the team come together is super motivating and super exciting. I got offered this position so I had to make a decision. I felt like if I didn't take this opportunity I would regret it for my, the rest of my life. It never crossed my mind that I'd be working in space, let alone you know sending something towards the moon and helping the team out and sitting in those seats and mission controller. <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is a pretty different ball game with Capstone versus Electron. One milestone that I'm particularly proud of and proud of the team for is, is the development of the Hypercurie. Getting the Hypercurie from sort of concept and design right through to, to flight is, is pretty impressive. We're developing an engine that is for deep space, it's really high delta V, a high thrust engine, um, and we're using green propellants. You know, that, that's really industry leading stuff and so we're right at the forefront of, of industry there. So it's great to see, you know, with that very first time we hot fire that engine um, and to see the, the look on people's faces and the, the excitement to know that we're one step closer. 
all the individuals, all the engineers uh, really attack a problem and everyone is looking to figure out how can we figure something out, how can we accomplish something. Bringing people from all ends of the business to ensure the success of this mission has been incredible to watch. Yeah, I'm just so happy for all the people who have worked so hard on it and um, yeah, seeing them rewarded for you know, how far we've come so far. It's super cool and I'm never going to look at the moon the same way again. Now some of those team members are here with me in Mission Control tonight as we wait for confirmation of that final hypercarry burn on Photon. And as you can see behind me, going to the moon is a team effort requiring dedication, innovation and drive from hundreds of people for more than two years. Today is a massive day as we reach the final stage of Rocket Lab's role in this moon mission for NASA. So as we wait for that final confirmation that Capstone has separated from Lunar Photon, it's a good time to reflect on the photon missions that have flown before, which paved the way for Capstone. While this is the very first flight of Lunar Photon, our high-energy photon variant for deep space missions, it is not the first of our own spacecraft we've flown to orbit. In August 2020, we deployed First Light, our very first photon spacecraft. This mission helped us test key technologies that would be used during the Capstone mission and was the first time we operated our own spacecraft on orbit for the very first time. We followed this up with the launch of Pathstone, another pathfinding photon spacecraft that tested photon systems and technology we planned to use for the Capstone mission. Now, Photon was just the beginning for Rocket Lab's space systems capabilities, though, and today, through our own technology development and the companies that have joined our team, we now deliver flight software, space solar power, separation systems, satellite radio, star trackers, reaction wheels, and more, of course. So this vertical integration across space systems was one of the main reasons we were selected to lead and design, sorry, lead the design and manufacture of 17 spacecraft buses for Global Star's new low Earth orbit constellation. All 17 of these 500 kilogram spacecraft will be designed and manufactured at our Long Beach headquarters, where our new high volume spacecraft manufacturing line is underway to support the growing demand for our satellites. Now, a check-in on the clock tells us we are now just moments away from payload deployment of Capstone from Photon. Our team in Mission Control will send the signal to Photon to perform that action, and we are expecting to receive confirmation of deployment in near real time. This is Rocket Lab's final responsibility for Capstone, after which the satellite's operators advance space take over the rest of their campaign. The campaign. This is a very big moment for the team. Let's listen into Mission Control. Energy altitude at about 1.1 million kilometers. Standing by for orbit determination to verify the tip state. Slew to deployment, attitude is complete. Battery voltage remains up.
minus 60 seconds on the play. Expect it to deploy in five, four, three, two, one, deploy. celebrations behind me, we have had confirmation that Photon has released Capstone on its ballistic lunar transfer. That is mission success for our first lunar mission. This is a monumental milestone for our team, for NASA, for our mission partners and for the future of space exploration. Capstone is the very first mission of NASA's Artemis program. Humanity's return to the moon is underway. Capstone is the successful step before humanity's next leap in space exploration. Now, while the team here in Mission Control celebrates, here with me is our founder and CEO, Peter Beck, to share some words about this historic, meet, this historic mission. Now, Peter, he founded Rocket Lab in 2006 with the goal of opening access to space and having just released the small satellite that will become the first of its kind to traverse the moon in that near rectilinear halo orbit. I think it's fair to say that the team has achieved something incredibly special today. Peter, congratulations. Thank you, Muriel. Thank you. It's awesome. Oh, so awesome. You must be it. thrilled. Yeah, I can't. I honestly, like, when I started the company, it was, it, I could not believe that we would, at this, you know, this soon be deploying something to the moon. It's phenomenal. Absolutely amazing. How does that feel after two years of just hard work, grit, determination, people put their heart and soul into this mission? This must be the combination of so many emotions. I mean, it, it, it's, it's really hard to explain how much effort this was. I mean, the amount of effort and time the team spent long hours into the morning, you know, designing new propulsion systems, you know, new separation systems, new spacecraft, uh, you know, the, the mission was just so incredibly complicated. I used to think, like, putting something into low Earth orbit was complicated. In this case, this was the easiest part of this whole mission, like, going to LEO was the easiest part. And, you know, all the subsequent burns and keeping the spacecraft alive and and keeping it all pointed in the right direction and making those, those absolutely pinpoint accurate burns. Phenomenal team. This team is just the most amazing team in the world. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, of course this isn't our first mission for NASA, but it is the furthest. Yes. Uh, what's it been like working with the agency and the other mission partners for this mission? Well, NASA has always been such a great partner. They've always really supported you know, new entrants to the, to, you know, to the industry, uh, right back to our VCLS mission where we successfully deployed payloads for them and other sub subsequent missions. And really, you know, this, this mission to the moon is, is, is you know, to, to give a small company uh, and you know who have never never been to you know a, a destination like this the opportunity to to prove themselves and go there uh, it's just been fantastic. They're a great great partner. And they have the team's proven themselves. We created yep. the whole new Hypercury engine yep. to see that uh, used successfully in this mission must just be a thrill for everybody. Yeah, I mean it's it's hard enough just buying a whole bunch of stuff off the shelf and integrating it together and, and doing one of these things. But to create all of this from scratch, literally blank sheet of paper, new propulsion system, new propellants, um, it's phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. 
what does this mean now for, for Photon, for Curie, for Rocket Lab? We've just proven we can go to the moon. What are we, what are we going to do next? Well, I mean, as you know, we're, we're you know, I'm, I'm dead keen to take us to Venus, and you know, we'll try and do that. And really, this has proven that we can get to Venus. Um, you know, the, the C3 that we just achieved there, going out to the Moon, uh, there's very little between what we, we did today and, and, and what we'll do going to Venus. Um, so, you know, we've built a really impressive, low-cost access to not only the Moon but to asteroids and to other planets in our solar system. And you know, this this really marks the beginning of a of a new scientific era, where for some tens of millions of dollars. You can go to the moon, Amazing. or you can go to an asteroid, or you can go to Mars or Venus. Um, it's just it's phenomenal. Where are you most looking forward to going then, to the missions we have coming up? Well, you know, Venus is obviously a, is a, a great sweet spot in my heart, and um, you know that, that, that mission will will work hard to you know try and pull that off. It's a private mission, so it's you know it's not a, a NASA funded mission. Um, but uh, you know, the, the, essentially with the Photon Lunar spacecraft, there's no difference between this spacecraft and the one going to Venus. So uh, this has really been a great a great you know, development cycle for that vehicle. Incredible when you think about it. It's it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. <laughs> Congratulations, Peter, once thank again. I know you want to celebrate with the team, yep, but yep. thank you for taking the time to speak thank with you. us. Thanks. Awesome stuff. So, well, we're going to close out today's show, but first I want to take a moment to thank our mission partners, Advanced Space, Terran Orbital, and, of course, NASA. As you heard uh, talking to Peter there, going to the moon requires collaboration, grit, determination, and a healthy dose of optimism, and we are grateful to have found all of these in our mission partners. So thank you very much for entrusting Rocket Lab with this first Artemis mission. We are so proud to play a key role in humanity's return to the moon. So with that, we're going to close out tonight's show and leave you with some final views of Capstone's liftoff on Electron. Thank you for joining us. This is Rocket Lab Mission Control signing off.